and welcome i am matt schaefer and i am so happy to have you here on my youtube channel i am a empowerment connection and relationship coach for women and we are here today to talk about seven secrets to turn a man on so if you're watching live or you're watching on the replay welcome put your comments down in the chat we are going to dive into this in just a second and before we do take a second hit that little subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'm always uploading new content and you know you wanna be a part of it when we dive in. So check it out. So let's let's go ahead and let's dive into this, y'all. Let's start looking at, you know, what does it mean? What does it mean to really be in connection and be in relationship with men? And how are we going to get better? Uh, how are we going to turn a man on? That's what we're that's what we're diving into today. Okay, so let's take a look at it. To everybody who's joining on live, say hi, say what's up, and I want to know your questions. What are the questions that you have around turning men on? Okay, that is what we're going to dive into. So the first thing I want you, and this is a, this is a principle that I use a lot of the time in my uh, in my coaching and in my in my thing and in all of my practice with with women is that you want to be the conductor in the bedroom i'm gonna put this in the chat right here boom you want to be the conductor in the bedroom so what would that look like what does it look like for you to be the conductor okay we're gonna dive into that. But also, I want you to look at that link right down there, ladies. If you haven't yet signed up for my course, Mastery of Connection, I am doing a free beta round of my course, Mastery of Connection. It's the last time I'm offering it for free. It's a $2,000 course. So if you haven't signed up yet, head on over to masteryofconnection.com and check it out. We're going to be uh, we're going to be starting next week on Monday, and it is your opportunity to get free coaching from me for a month and four, uh, four full video lessons, four full video modules around how to get better relationships from the inside out. So if you wanna have better connections with men in your life, head on over to Mastery Connection and sign up. It's going to be an incredible experience. I guarantee it. So let's talk about turning men on, right? What does it mean? How are we going to be more connected and turn men on, right? I want you to I want you to ask yourself, what would it look like for you? I'm going to blow this up. To be a conductor, to be a conductor in the bedroom, right? One of the greatest things you can do for men when it comes to sex, when it comes to physical connection is to ask is to take some cues from their behavior. Take some cues from what it is that you've seen them be into and ask them, hey, is this something you like? Hey, what would it look like if we did this? I see that you're sort of into that. And I'm gonna give you a really great example of what that looks like, okay? I had a client who was, uh, she was in a relationship with a guy, okay? They've been in a relationship, relationship for a couple years and their sex life was like not really, it wasn't really popping, okay? But she was, she was like, she was like kind of confu confused, right? Because he would always keep buying her shoes. She would always keep, he would always keep buying her shoes and they didn't, and she didn't understand why does this guy keep buying me shoes? No man ever buys women's shoes, right? That's such an interesting, that's such a weird thing that he does, right? And I'm just like, oh, really? And I'm like, well, does he ever ask you? And I thought about this. Uh, does he ever ask you to wear shoes during sex? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, don't you understand what's going on here? This guy, I mean, he probably has a foot fetish, right? But he doesn't know how to like share that with you or a shoe fetish. But, you know, he doesn't know how to have that conversation with you because we don't. A lot of times with, with all types of vulnerability, men, have, especially with sexual vulnerability, men have a lot of issues around, you know, diving in and sharing what they're into, right? Because there are a few more painful ways that a man can be rejected sexually than to uh, than to be than to be rejected sexually. Like, there's few there's few more painful ways for men to be rejected than to be rejected sexually or to be shamed, right? I think a lot of men are there's a fear that a lot of men have, right, that they are going to be shamed for their own sexual 
uh, desires, right? Because maybe they're into something, you know, a shoe fetish. I mean, it's not super out there, right? But it's 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 something that for some women, they might consider that to be a little unusual. Some guys might be into BDSM, right? They might be into some bondage. They might have some, some interesting kinks, right? And they're afraid. They're afraid to talk about it. So I want you to ask yourself with the men that you're in relationship with, have you ever asked him, what is he into? Have you ever asked him what his kinks are? Because as soon as she found out that, uh, that this was a thing, that he was into this foot fetish thing, and he st she started, she asked him, and he said, yeah, I'm into that, it turns me on, right? Once she asked the question, it created that safety. It created that safety. So ask yourself, how can you be the conductor in the bedroom by asking questions about sex, kinks, etc.? So put your comments in. Hi, so we have lots of amazing people coming on. Uh, lots of, we have Eat with Kishia Vlogs. Hi from Toronto. Yeah, let me know where you're watching from and please let me know your questions. I'm gonna be answering questions around men and sex throughout this show. And uh, if you haven't yet signed up for Mastery of Connection, my free final beta launch of my $2,000 course, this is your opportunity to do that at masteryconnection.com down at the link. I'm going to be, uh, right, that starts next Monday. Super exciting. Okay, so let's see. What do we got some good questions here? Karen says, uh, I couldn't deal with bondage after a friend telling me what it was. Okay. <laughs> so Karen, so there you go. Like that's, that's important to know that, right? And so here's the thing. Bondage can look a lot of different ways. There's no one way to do dominance and submission and bondage. And you know, in my own experience, like it can be some of the most intimate, some of the deepest levels of trust and passion can be formed in that sort of dynamic, right? But it takes both partners being open, right? So this is a huge thing that I want to bring up uh, with, with men. This is a huge thing that I want to, I want to bring up is that you want to be open to what he's into okay you want to be open to what he's into and curious be open and curious be asking questions be the conductor what does a conductor do in a symphony a conductor invites and evokes the orchestra the doers right the musicians to create beautiful music so you are going to be inviting this man to share what's in his heart to share those things that you know he might be a little ashamed of or afraid to to share with you uh hi mary mary carmen from orlando florida so so i'm not saying you have to be into it i'm saying be open to it be open to having the conversation okay so kim because kim asked so what if you're not into his kinks great question okay so uh you i think in any relationship right when it comes to sex it's important to look for uh finding compromise and middle ground right so maybe you're not into his kinks like all the way right but what would it look like for you to compromise and meet him in the middle somewhere okay so there's always middle ground depending upon what his kinks are and what your comfort level is right like some women are not into bondage at all but you know if you just try something maybe that you haven't done before and you do it very gently like instead of doing you know bondage doesn't have to be you know leather and whips and all sorts of crazy stuff it can be as simple as some fluffy uh some fluffy handcuffs or like a, a ribbon right tied around the the bedpost you know so there's so many different ways to do this but what i really want to warn you against because another another aspect of this show is what not to do right i'm going to add that here in the description uh and what not to do one of the things you really <laughs> don't ever want to do right is you you don't want to you don't want to be dismissive or shaming around what a man is into because if a man has the courage to to share his what's in his heart to share what he's craving right y you get to honor that you get to hold space for that right even if it's not something that you've ever considered doing right or that you really have any interest in doing 
you got to remember, right? This is someone that you're in relationship with. This is someone that you want to get to know and that you're, this is someone who, who you love or you care about in some, in some level, right? Like you, you get to find some middle ground with him around that because nobody wants to feel shamed or dismissed for what it is that they're into. Are you with me? Give me a one if y'all, if y'all are into. Uh, Tilly Savan says, what are kinks? Like, how do you define it? Okay, so kinks can be any sexual desire that maybe is outside of the main, the, like the mainstream, just, you know, I, I also, I'll say vanilla type sex, which is also fantastic, right? Sex is fantastic when it's done from a healthy aligned space with somebody that's on the same page as you. But a kink would be like a sexual desire or a sexual preference or something that might be a little outside of the realm of what's considered traditional sex. So it could be anything. It could be a foot fetish. It could be bondage. It could be anal. It could be, you know, a million different. There's so like, and we're not going to go down the rabbit hole of all the fetishes that exist in the world, right? But just like, here's the thing. Most men have some kinks, some fetishes, some alternative things that they're into or that they're curious about. And one of the greatest ways you can turn a man on is by asking him questions, being actively curious in, in exploring what his kinks are. And maybe he doesn't even know, right? Maybe he doesn't even know what, what, what he's into until you guys start having that dialogue around it. Okay, uh, Kathy has an interesting, <laughs> an interesting point. And Kathy, I feel you, sister. A lot of my clients, a lot of my students uh, talk to me about this. I'm open to kinks, but I'm having issues with my kinks being addressed. Any of y'all relate to that? Give me a one. <laughs> I, uh, I totally get it. And so when you say you have issues getting your kinks addressed, do you mean that, man, that the man that you're with or the, man, the men that you're with are not open to exploring your kinks? And I would ask, like, how are you bringing them up? What's the context, right? Because we want, we want to be very, uh, very, very warm and loving and direct, right, in what it is that we want. And we always want to invite someone to, we always want to invite a man to into exploring kinks with us from a space of how it feels to you. Because when you're in, when a man is in relationship with a woman, you got to remember he is first and fundamentally invested in making you feel good. That is a priority for him. So and so the way that you can like really motivate him to want to be in that space with you and explore your kinks with you is to let him know how good it makes you feel. Ground the conversation in that. Okay, super, super, super important. And uh, you want to be continually inviting him into, oh my God, it would feel so good if we were to, if we were to do this, if we were to try that, you know, can, it would be, would, it would make me so happy if we could do this, right? You want to, inv you don't want to be in a, in a nagging or a pressing space with him when you're asking him to explore something that you're into, because if you start becoming forceful, if you start uh, operating from a space of frustration and demanding what it is that you're, that you're into, uh, then that's something that will, that'll cause it, that'll depolarize a man to, uh, and, and make the whole situation. He'll then shut down and sort of pull back and he most definitely won't feel in his masculine and like he's able to explore these kinks with you. Okay, so uh, that's, uh, <laughs> look at look at Stell, love it Stell, love the shares. Yeah, let's get real y'all, let's get real. T tell me, tell me everything. Tell me, let's talk about, let's, let's get weird. Let's talk about our kinks, let's get into it, right? And this is the thing, like these are the conversations that get to be had, not just on our YouTube live, but in our relationships, right? Because th this is where a lot of times men get turned on. Stell says, sometimes I wouldn't wear undies to tell him that I'm into it in case it doesn't. Crossing his mind, crossing his, crossed his mind in doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes the best way you can express your kink to a, to a man is to just show it to him. Show up in that lingerie, right? Just be that, be that force in his, uh, in, in his life. And he'll be, he'll be very, very, very excited. Arlette has a great question. How can you find your own kinks? Well, one of the best ways is to, uh, is to is to do some do some research, right? Because what is a kink? A kink is some sort of alternative sexual activity, right? Something outside of the mainstream that turns you on. So you get to expose yourself to different different kinks, right? By going online and watching different types of stuff, and then uh, seeing what what turns you on, right? Until you feel that reaction, right? Until you feel your body sort of light up from it, you don't know, and maybe he doesn't know either. 
right? So one of the greatest ways you and a partner can help understand what your kinks are is to talk about different aspects. Hey, have you ever, for example, Kelly says, have you ever thought about choking? Choking's one of those things that, uh, that you know, like, I, I, it took a long time. I didn't know that choking was was hot, like, to me until I had a partner that was into it. And then I was like, whoa, this is really hot if it's done in a, in, you know, in a responsible, loving way, right? Like, so, but that's the thing, you know, sh sometimes sharing your kinks with a partner or asking for what you want, like, for example, with choking, right? If you're having sex with him and you want to express to him that you're, uh, that you want to be, that you want to be choked or whatever, instead of telling him, hey, choke me, which a guy could be like, whoa, that's a lot. Just take his hands and put them around your neck, right? One of the greatest ways to turn a man on is to lead by example, okay? Lead by example. Demonstrate what you want, okay? This is so important. Like, lead by example. Demonstrate what you want. Show him. Put his hands where you want his hands. If you want him while you guys are having sex, for him to play with you in some way, you know, like with your with your clit or whatever it is, like put his hands there. Just put his hands there. There's nothing hotter than to have a woman just sh just just guide you into into what it is that you want. Are you with me on this? This is super. This is super good stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> Moon Goddess says, I like when he likes when I take charge in a light BDSM way, but I never know what to say or <laughs> what to do or say. <laughs> and again, my dear Miss Moon Goddess, there is so much a lot of and some men are into that, right? Some men may be they might be dominant, they might be submissive, right? Most men are gonna fall on one end of the spectrum or the other. And until but until they see and experience you, they're not gonna know if you're open to exploring that with them. Okay, so so Moon Goddess, when it comes to not knowing what to say or do in the uh, in the in the dominant phase in, in relationship, again, watch some good tasteful adult videos where you know you see a woman taking charge, being a little bit of a dominatrix. See how she uh, see how she talks, right? See how she interacts. See see how she you know tells him what what she wants and what to do and everything else. This is a really powerful, uh, there's a lot of stuff out there. And then when you get in that, when you get in that situation, just sort of play that role, play that character. And, and most importantly, when you're doing that is when you're telling him what to do, right? When you're in that dominatrix role with him is to watch his response, watch his reaction. If he's writhing, if you can, fee if you see him just like his eyes rolling back in his head, uh, doing all that stuff, like then you know, whatever you're doing is working. Because remember, men are not going to be as open and communicative about this stuff as women. Like they're they're going to be less less open or less prone to say, "Oh my God, that feels so good, baby." Like they're not going to. A lot of men just don't aren't comfortable being that vulnerable. But you can tell, ladies, give me a one if you can tell when you're turning a man on. <laughs> it's important for you to look for his nonverbal cues, to look for his body language, to look for the way that he's writhing around or his eyes are going back in his head. That's how you know that you're getting him going. And so if he's getting turned on by you bossing him around, then you know, <laughs> then you know what's going on. And uh, Rachel has a great point here and something that I was actually going to address is that one of the other important ways to, uh, to understand, you know, what it is that turns you on and how to enter this space with, uh, with a partner is to really like know your body, know your body, <laughs> know your body with it, with, with men. So do you have, you know, toys that you use on yourself? Have you explored them? Do you know, you know, the, the easiest and the best ways to, to, to have an orgasm? right? Like, do you know your own body? Because how can you explore, you know, vulnerable, pleasurable exchanges with a man if you don't know what you like, right? So there's a lot of opportunities in the realm of self-pleasure and self-exploration. It's very important for you for you to know that first, okay? So I'm going to phrase that very specifically here because I think this is such an important, such an important point is you, you got to know your own body and your own preferences, before you enter into the bedroom. Okay, so we start there. <laughs>
try some different toys, right? Watch some different types of adult videos. Start looking, start making a list, right? Of the fetishes that may interest you, of the sort of vibrators that you like, of the way that you would like to be touched, you know? Are you open? Like there, there you can go online and find like there are whole, actually there's like a whole fetish uh, like questionnaire that's like got hundreds of things on it and you can do this with your partner and it has different columns for uh, done it, love it, uh, don't like it, open to it and for hundreds of different things, every type of kink and fetish that you can imagine, okay? So it'd be it's really fun for you and a partner to both take that, I actually did that <laughs> with a partner of mine once, uh, to do, do that with a partner and to fill out this questionnaire and then to trade notes Right then, to just then to just give each other their copies of their of of their of their kink worksheet, right? And then you can see, okay, well, you're open to that. You're open to this. You're curious about that. You definitely don't want to do that. And that's a that can be a, a great starting point. If you Google, you know, like fetish checklist or whatever, you can you can find it. It's pretty pretty easy. Hi, Cindy Merriweather. Good to see you. Uh, Stell says watch porn together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, watching porn together is great. Watching porn together. Watching healthy porn, not like porn that. You know that is sensationalistic and whatever else, but to, to to explore different fetishes, you can find good, you know, tasteful videos around that explore different aspects of sexuality and see if it gets y'all's motor running. You know, it's very, 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 very powerful stuff. So once you know your own body and your own preferences, the uh, the next step is this is a this is a little three step process. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna throw at you. Okay, is I want you to introduce him. To your favorite toys and fetishes to enhance the sexual experience not replace what he does okay because this is a fear that a lot of men have right is that if there if a woman picks up a vibrator or picks up you know a different toy or a different thing it's because he's not doing his job and that's a very traditional sort of macho masculine uh old school masculine thing right that he needs to be the one solely providing the pleasure and so it's going to be up to you to introduce introduce to him the things that you like the things that you're into once you've done your homework right and you've discovered that for yourself first and be like hey so i love our sex and i love our physical connection and you know what might make it even more fun like i really have this one toy that i love to use on myself sometimes i'd love to integrate it into into our sex like would that be cool i think i think it would feel really good i think it would add a whole other layer like i love our sex and i want to add this even 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 more right so uh it's really and, and you might be surprised you might be afraid to do that because you don't want a man to feel like you know you're making him feel like he's not enough but you got to remember the man's fundamental interest is making you feel good right so if he you know, isn't able, and, and this is most women, right? Most women aren't able to have orgasm during, you know, penetrative intercourse, right? That's a common thing. I think it's like 60% or more of women, like, don't come during, you know, normal physical intercourse with a man. They, they, they come much more often through oral sex, right? So imagine, like, as a man, right, if, if it's, or, and you've been faking it, right, or something like that, like, Imagine if, you know, how good it would feel as a man to, to recognize that if we use a toy during sex, you might be able to come two or three or four times, right? And during sex. And how awesome would that be? And uh, yeah, <laughs> Lou says, what about buying a toy together? Awesome idea, Lou. Awesome idea. Like buying a toy together can be one of the, buying toy together, watching porn together, de-shaming, de-shaming, de-stigmatizing the process of, of learning what turns each other on is one of the greatest habits that you can have in uh, in relationship, right? Just just get the shame out of the picture, right? There is no kink that is wrong. There is no sexual preference that is wrong, right? Let's let's take let's leave judgment out of the bedroom. Can we do that? Give me one if you wanna if if you're up for that, because if you want a man to feel safe, like and there's the thing, if you want to turn a man on in the bedroom. Make him feel safe. Make him feel safe to be powerful. Make him feel safe to be submissive or be dominant or be whatever it is that, that really lights him up. Make him feel safe to share with you this kink that he's never been able to share with any other woman. The safer you can make him feel that you are up for at least having a conversation around whatever, 
that is going to make him that's going to really pique his interest and it's going to it's going to it's going to reignite your uh more it's going to reignite your sex life like maybe if sex life has has gone down like i remember i dated i dated a woman for uh for a while and gosh i'm going to tell moderately personal things about myself in this video because i guess i really have no choice if we're talking about this right but i dated a woman for a long time and we had pretty good sex right uh, we had, we had actually had really good sex. We had fantastic sex, but things had started to sort of taper down a little bit at, at, at around the year mark or so until, you know, I randomly turned on my camera once and she, and, and, you know, videoed us like doing some stuff and she loved that. She loved it a lot. Right. And then that became a thing that we would do is we would do little adult videos ourselves. And it was a hugely uh, it was, it was, it added a whole nother layer to our intimacy and to our sex life. And it was like a sexual renaissance that we had in our relationship. So what could you add into your own sexual practice? What could you add into your, into your bed, into your bedroom behavior to have you go through a sexual renaissance in, uh, in the bedroom? So I love this stuff. I love this stuff, guys. I love talking about this and we're going to dive into some more stuff here in just a second. But if you are new, uh, take a second, hit that little subscribe button. I'm always uploading new content and you know you want to be a part of all my videos that I'm releasing uh, all the time. And if you haven't signed up for my course yet, uh, Mastery of Connection, Transformational Love and Relationship Course, we start next week. 413. It's going to be a live month long experience with 25 video lessons, twice weekly office hours, live coaching with me and a community of over a thousand women. We're already at over a thousand women in the Facebook group, which is incredible. It's such a really, it's such an incredible experience and such a vibrant community of supportive women. So in this time, right, where we're all sort of sitting around on quarantine or dealing with this pandemic, like why not work on yourself? Right? Why not work on yourself and uh, and come you know into a new level, right? Come into a new level of personal development. Okay, so well, so head on over to masteryconnection.com uh, and check it out. So Rosemary says, uh, role playing is a must. We love that. Yeah, role playing is really is really really good. You know, uh, Marie has an interesting question. What if he wants to use a drug to enhance the sexual experience? Hmm. Interesting question, Maria. I, 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 I appreciate that. And I guess it a little bit depends on what drug and what the context is. Uh, but in general, drugs can definitely complicate sex because <laughs> especially if you become dependent on them, like if you can only, you know, get off if you're, if you're rolling, right? If you're on Molly or on cocaine or something, then that's not healthy, right? Because that isn't a sustainable pattern and you don't want to develop sexual patterns that are not healthy and not sustainable. Like, like kinks, as long as they're done responsibly, right? Can be healthy and sustainable for both parties, right? Taking drugs, for sex, I mean, every once in a while, if it's something that you're both into, listen, I'm not judging, I'm not judging you if you want to have a little Molly fueled roll in the hay, but like, it can't be like every weekend, right? And it's it, and the problem with doing that is sometimes the experience you have on drugs during sex will be so intense and so profound that then sober sex afterwards will sort of feel, eh it'll lose a little bit of the shine, right? Because you've had this like extreme experience, right? So just know that, know that and know that it, it can be a slippery slope, drugs during uh, drugs during sex. So that's my read uh, on that. So many questions, keep the questions coming. Uh, <laughs> keep the questions coming. Mavic says, dance naked in front of him after having a shower. Heck yeah, and Mavic, I love that. That's a uh, That's a really good one. Uh, Brooke has a great question. Good to see you, Brooke. Uh, Brooke says, how to encourage him to do a little longer foreplay before penetrating? Great, great question, right? So a lot of men do this. A lot of men want to just get right to the, right to the point, right? Right to the, you know, going right into, right into the thing. And so it's going to be up to you to guide him, to guide his hands where you want him, to guide his his body where you want him, to invite him to do more things to you, to let him know it feels so good when you put your lips on my breasts or between my legs or like whatever it is. Like it's going to be up to you because men, you know, when we get into the zone, when we get into the mode, like 
we want to just go for the goal line, right? Like that's that's when men get to men men get when men get you know really worked up. So it's going to be up to you if you want more foreplay for you to sort of playfully keep boundaries with him and keep guiding him into doing other activities with you other than sex. And maybe that would mean, you know, you doing uh, a little oral sex on him and then having him return the favor. And so, you know, make it a dance, make it an exchange, but you're going to get to stand in your power there and guide him uh, towards other things other than just penetration, right? Because that's going to be up to you. It's going to be up to you. Uh, Rosemary has a great role playing is a must. We love that. I love it, Rosemary. Yeah, role playing can be super fun. The uh, what? The teacher student, the neighbor liaison. I mean, there's a million. There's a million different uh, role playing. And so, and how did you, R Rosemary? How did y'all? How did y'all discover that you were both into role playing? Let me guess, you had a conversation around it, right? Conversation is the core of, uh, of turning a man on, okay? <laughs> so super, super, super powerful. Okay, hi. What you weren't supposed to. Let's see, hola, hola, hola has a good question. What are you not supposed to do as the woman the first time you have sex with a new partner? <laughs> I uh, I like that. I like that. Okay, so what are you not supposed to do? All right. Uh, you're not supposed to shame or judge a man, right? You're not supposed to, like, you basically, you want to remember, especially the first time, the first time you have sex with anybody, generally speaking, it isn't going to be the best sex you're going to have with this person. <laughs> It's the first time you're getting used to each other. So being patient, being loving, being encouraging, uh, being supportive, really putting prioritizing his safety because you got to remember for men, right? Like in order for sex to happen, like men, like we have to perform. Like that's an important thing. So there, there's an inherent pressure, and especially that first time that pressure can be very intense. So I invite you uh, as a woman to take the initiative you know, some oral sex can be, you know, really powerful, like to really make him feel safe. Like you want to make a man feel safe, give him a blowjob. I'm just going to say it. If you want to make a man feel safe, give him a blowjob. Like that's one of the, one of nothing, nothing makes a man feel safer and more empowered a lot of times than uh, having a woman initiate and enthusiastically give oral sex. Are you with me? You should be. Because it is the truth, right? And so I think women a lot of times don't realize that they have a superpower. Like uh, I, I read a I read a meme somewhere that that the uh, the blowjob is that the blowjob to a man is the equivalent of giving a bouquet of flowers to a woman. So just how you know if a man gives you a bouquet of flowers, you feel so uh, appreciated and it's like a beautiful experience. You feel so flattered by it and you just love receiving that. Men feel the same way about oral sex. I promise. <laughs> okay. So Sally's on board. Sally says, uh, I love taking the initiative. <laughs> uh, I love, yeah, it's powerful. It's powerful. Now, Princess T says, not the first time, ladies. And Princess T, are you saying don't do oral sex the first time? I think it's a great thing to do the first time because it takes the pressure down a notch, right? And it shows that you're open and that you're willing to be connected to him. And it can be a really powerful way to sort of smooth some of the awkwardness, right, of that first time that you're having sex uh, with a guy. So that's that's my read. That's my read on it. Uh, Eat with Kesha says, a former boyfriend told me I'm bad at sex. We didn't work out, but I also get guys now that I'm really attracted to. So I guess I want to do more. So attraction is important. Yeah. And that's an important thing to look at is that like, if you're not attracted to the person that you're engaged with, right. Or that you're sleeping with the sex is going to suffer, right? Cause sex without attraction is like a mechanical exercise. It's not fun and welcome everybody joining live. Hey y'all, we're talking about secrets on how to turn a man on and what not to do okay and uh if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet be sure to hit the subscribe button i'm always uploading new content and you know you want to get notified when i'm going live when i'm doing recorded videos i'm going to get back to doing recorded videos here y'all starting next week so look for my next edited published video next week it's going to be super duper fun so tilly savan has a great question here uh what about when one person wants sex and the other person doesn't 
This is a uh, this is a huge one, right? What to do? What to do when one partner doesn't want sex? And when one person wants sex, the other person doesn't. Well, first off, I think having a conversation around it is important. A conversation from a space of non-judgment, right? So the fact that one partner wants sex and the other partner doesn't, it isn't something to be taken personally, right? Like I think that it's very important that we honor where our partners are at. Right. So say, for example, you don't want to have sex and he does, which is, I guess, maybe the standard situation, but not always, not always. A lot of times it can happen the other way. Right. But let's just say, for example, you don't want to have sex and uh, and your your other one does. Right. He does. Right. He's trying to initiate. and You don't want it. Right. It's important that you that you don't reject him in a way that makes him feel shamed. Right. Because for a man. Uh, initiating sex and sexual connection is often one of the deepest ways that we express emotions towards women. So, so you got to remember, like for a lot of times, like, like sex is an act of emotional vulnerability and expression for men, especially if they're not good with their words. Sometimes that's how they sh share that they love you is through sex. So if you say, no, I don't want that, you know, I'm not in the mood, and you just shut him down, you're rejecting an emotional overture with a man that can cause him to shut down emotionally and cause him to feel, you know, sort of shamed, and it can cause a lot of stuff to come up for him. So it's important for you, if you're going to say no to a man, and you can set this up with him ahead of time, right? And just let him know, sometimes you don't want to have sex, and it's nothing that it's nothing that he's doing wrong. It's nothing that you know, is wrong with him in any way, but sometimes you're just not going to be into it. So let's make an agreement ahead of time to, uh, if one partner doesn't want to have sex, that it's okay, that it's okay. And that, you know, it's not like we're never going to have sex again. It's just not going to happen tonight. And so if you have to say no, right, that you're not ready for sex right now, be like, Hey, so, you know, normally I'd really love to do this, but I'm just like, not really feeling it right now. But I promise like, you know, tomorrow or the next day, I can't wait to have, I'm really looking forward to having sex with you then. But right now, you know, I'm just not feeling it. So you, so you see what you're doing. You're sort of giving him a gentle but firm uh, correction that you're not going to have sex right now. But then you're also letting him know, right, that he is, it's not that he did anything wrong. It's not like you're never going to have sex again. Because men, if we just get rejected, we create this narrative. Right? We create this narrative that, oh, you, you, you don't want to have sex with me because I'm bad at sex or, uh, you know, I'm not properly equipped or you don't love me anymore or whatever. Like we will fill the void of that rejection in with our own ego conversation and all of our woundedness. OK, so again, like be patient, be loving, don't fully reject more redirect when it comes to this. And, and also you can set out ground rules ahead of times around this, that if one person doesn't want to have sex, that the other person agrees to not take it personally. So I make it, I make that a ground rule in relationship, uh, moving forward and, and, and just, you know, address it that way. Does that make sense? Give me one if y'all are on board, uh, with that. Oh, uh, Tony's, Tony, Tony's joined the, joined the course. I love it. Yay. She, she calls me Mark because <laughs> I was on Mark's channel. That's must've been where she met me. I'm so excited to start your course. We're excited to have you, Tony. Uh, I hope you've joined the Facebook group already. We got a Facebook group with over a thousand women in it. You want to join that party? I'm jumping in and doing lives every day. So if you guys haven't, if you guys, oh, it's over here. Okay. So it's right there. Yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't joined a, a mastery connection yet, I'm going to, you know, this is your opportunity to do so. I'll give you a DJ Airhorn. <laughs> Master Your Connection starts uh, April 13th. It's a four week transformational love and relationship course with live coaching for me uh, and, and 25 video lessons in an amazing Facebook community of over a thousand women, probably a lot more by the time it's all said and done. So if you're looking for an amazing transformational experience over the course of the next month while we're all dealing with this pandemic, it's absolutely free for you as a beta tester. Uh, this is the last time I'm going to be doing this as a beta. It's a $2,000 course. So come on over, check it out. Can't wait to see you, Tony. Looking forward to it. Okay. So, uh, so, so I just want, I just want to, to go through this three-step framework. We have lots of great questions coming in. Keep adding your questions. I will be answering questions throughout this live, but, uh, let's go through the first two steps that we talked about here, right? So these were the first two steps that we talked about. There was know your body and your own preferences, right? So do your homework ahead of time. Then there is 
uh, introduce him to your favorite toys and fetishes to enhance, not replace him. So you're going to let him know that, you know, you're, you're not looking to replace him, but you would love to integrate other things in, right? Super, super, super important. And now this is the last and uh, another very, very, very important point is that you want to don't be afraid to interrupt the routine of sex that you may have with him. So this is very important. Like you are welcome to throw in it, throw in a little change in pattern, right? Take control sometimes. Don't be afraid to like play with the power dynamics, right? Initiate sometimes. If he's all if you're always waiting for him to initiate, initiate on him. Right? Like if he's used, used to being the dominant person, throw him down, right? And take control. You know, like be willing to to get feisty out in a public place with him, right? If y'all are walking around and pull him off into the bushes or an alleyway some way and have a little fun. I mean, I don't know. Like whatever your normal pattern is, I want you to ask yourself, how can I mix it up? Because one of the fundamental principles of masculine and feminine energy dynamics is the feminine is that men are craving being set free by the feminine. We are craving freedom. And one of the greatest ways that we are craving freedom is freedom from our patterns, freedom from our responsibilities, freedom from our routines. So the more spontaneous and inviting and dynamic you can be with us, the better, especially when it comes to sex. Sex is one of the greatest places where you can bring a man into a space of freedom and release. The act of orgasm for a man for a lot of men, it's one of the only times that we as men can get out of our heads and into our bodies. It's one of the only times that we as men can be fully present in the moment is when we are connected and have having beautiful sex with a woman. So just know that like, you know, in, in that container of that sexual experience, you have so much power to set a man free, to get him to drop his walls, to get him to be vulnerable. Like I've had profound emotional experiences during sex with women that I've, you know, cared very deeply for, right? Some of them, I've had beautiful emotional breakthroughs around that, right? So just know that there's a huge opportunity you have to interrupt the routine and set a man free by, uh, by being that loving container and inviting him to try something that maybe he's never tried before. <laughs> it is a huge, huge, huge pattern. Okay. So let's do some questions boom okay let's see uh vicky vicky says and this goes to something we've been talking about hi vicky who has a big one okay so vicky says it's very uncomfortable to bring up new things new moves uh new ideas without feeling judged my husband hubby and i have discovered sexy time stories which is just sexting but with fantasies so anything goes i'm gonna give that a hold on wait for it a round of applause, Vicky. <laughs> Super cool to do uh, to do sexy time stories. So fantasy sexting, sexting in general. That's actually going to be just so you know. My next recorded video is going to be how to turn him on without touching him. So it's sort of like a sexting and sort of like remote foreplay, a uh, lot of remote foreplay video for what to do during this crazy sort of quarantine situation that we're in. But uh, sexting is a powerful way to prime the pump, right? And uh, it can be very, it can be very uncomfortable to bring up new stuff without feeling judged, unless you and your partner ahead of time have established your relationship and established your connection as a safe space for the two of you. Like it's a no, it's a judgment free zone. Like, what would it look like for you to be like, hey, so, you know, whatever you're, I mean, imagine saying this to your partner. Imagine how this would make him feel. Imagine how this would make him feel to have you just look him in the eyes and be like, listen, I'm curious to anything that you're, anything you may be into that you've never shared with me. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear about like what you're into that maybe you've never tried with anybody and if you've never tried with me or with anybody, tell me. I, I promise I won't judge you. I promise I won't get upset. And I mean, it can be, it can be anything, right? And just pro if you can promise him ahead of time that you're not going to judge him and you're not going to take it personally, no matter what it is, even if he wants a threesome or whatever it is that he might be into, you know, be w ready and willing to be like, wow, that sounds really interesting. What is it about that that turns you on, right? Ask even if it's something that you're not open to doing. Ask him a follow-up question about it. 
ask him a follow-up question about it, get him to put words on it, and you will learn a lot about him. You'll learn a lot about him and where he's at, and it can be an incredible learning uh, learning experience for, bo for both of you, right? So can you just make the bedroom a judgment-free zone? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Arlet, how to make him feel safe when he did not perform as desired? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, and uh, that's... <laughs> Arlet, I feel you there. Uh, and I think the best way to make him feel safe is to not shut down on him after sex. Because after he, you know, maybe he, what, lost it midway through or came too quick or something like that. Uh, he's oftentimes going to be deeply self-conscious of that. So it's going to be important for you to let him know that even though things didn't go as planned, you still had fun and you look forward to doing it again. And that's a, that's a great thing uh, that uh, Moon Goddess chimed in. Say, that was amazing, can we do it again? I wouldn't necessarily say that was amazing because then he's gonna know you're overselling it. <laughs> and he's gonna be like, that was not amazing. <laughs> don't, don't, don't bullshit me. Like, so don't, don't, don't go that far. But you can absolutely, uh, you can absolutely say, okay, uh, you know, that was, that was fun you know, and cuddle him and, and just let him, just don't reject him or shame him for his underperformance. That's the most important part to this is to not, uh, to, and, and also the asking for it again is a great idea. I can't, ooh, I can't wait for next time, you know, because again, the ma the masculine narrative is going to be, oh, I blew it. Oh, I, the sex sucked, you know, so she's not going to have sex with me anymore. I mean, all these like crazy stories will go through a man's head. After uh, after he doesn't you know necessarily do what it is that you want because we, we put a lot of we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to perform like just the same sort of pressure we put our we put on ourselves to perform at work and in our business or in that those areas of our life a lot of times men will put that same pressure on themselves in the bedroom and that so when when whatever happens and we don't cut the mustard right we don't do it we don't do what it is that we wanted to do it can be like very deeply emasculating and embarrassing to us so how can you make a man feel safe? in that in that space and let him know that you still love him and you're still excited for next time and you know just just like that i think that that's the best way to handle <laughs> the best way to handle that <laughs> yeah so uh yeah so lisa lisa has an interesting point here and lisa i want you to look at it maybe if you're projecting a little bit do not let him get away with that he should care if you aren't satisfied and believe me he knows you have to tell him so lisa i, I don't think she said that you know he doesn't care right? She just said that like, what do I do if he can't perform or if he doesn't perform as expected, right? So most men, you know, no matter how emotionally invested they are in you or not, like they want to perform <laughs> well during sex. <laughs> so uh, that, that's my take. That's my take on that. Sarita has a great question. Sarita, our twerker <laughs> from our last live says, uh, is it wrong to be a little suggestive with texting when you can't really follow through on your suggestions right now? Absolutely not. No, man, love it. Man, love suggestive texts. Man, love like digital foreplay. We are into it. That's one of the greatest things you can do in connection with a man is to tease him and uh, spice things up. And, and maybe you can't, you're not gonna see him uh, until, you know, weeks or months later, even if you're like far apart or you're in quarantine, you're in lockdown, men still enjoy it. We still enjoy sexy texting. It makes us feel good. It makes us feel good to feel that you want us. Okay. That's an important thing to recognize here is that it's, it turns a man. One of the greatest ways to turn a man on is to give him a window into your mind. Okay. This is an important thing I want to land. It's important enough that I'm going to write it down. Your thoughts turn a man on more than anything. Okay, so this is an important, an important concept that I want to I want to land with you here because this this is huge. Uh, the, your thoughts, the thoughts that you like, you sharing your thoughts, you sharing that you're thinking about him that you know, you're getting turned on thinking about him. You giving him a window into your mind is tremendously arousing. 
few things make a man feel more powerful and more desired, right? Than getting a window into the mind of their woman and just saying like, oh my God, she's thinking about me. She's getting turned on talking about me or I'm in, I'm in her head. That's super, super, super hot, right? Like that's, it's, a, it's a powerful, powerful, powerful practice. So whatever that looks like for you in your relationship, how can you let a man know that you're thinking about him? Is it through text message, right? Is it through a little voicemail? Uh, is it through a note that you leave him, you know, like put a note in, 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 in his cabinet or in his car, Hey, can't wait to, you know, tear your clothes off later or whatever. Just sort of like priming the pump with him is so powerful and so, so, so great. Uh, so Kim asks, can that be overbearing? I mean, maybe if you, if you're doing it all the time and he's not into it, right. But most men I'll tell you are very, 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 very into it. Right. Sally says, Digital texting turns me on. Yeah, it's super hot. It's a great, uh, it's a great, great, great process, you know. And and really, like Kathy expresses it so beautifully here when she says that it's nice knowing men are just as insecure. Yeah, sex is so intimate, and you're opening yourself up. It is. We have so many of our own fears and our own insecurities and our own uh ugh, stuff around around sex, right? And so the more we can together in partnership make sex a safe space, a judgment-free zone for both parties. It is one of the hugest, one of the biggest, most beautiful things you can do, right? Just know that. So, so, so recognize we're talking about how to turn a man on and, and what not to do. Uh, oh, I had a question. Someone asked, what are the, what are some of the things, what are some of the ways that uh, that women are bad at sex. Okay, well now, you're, now you're just asking me to get real with y'all here, and <laughs> I'm happy to do that. But before we do, if you haven't signed up for Mastery of Connection yet, my transformational relationship course, I'm doing a free beta as a gift for my community. I would love to have you as part of my course. It's gonna be a month long, incredible experience with 25 video lessons, live coaching, live coaching for me twice a week, live video coaching and uh, a, a group of over a thousand women already on Facebook. So head on over to masteryofconnection.com and you can sign up over there. We'd love to have you as part of the tribe. We start next week, next Monday. It's super exciting. So Princess T asks, what are some ways that women are bad at sex? Okay, uh, and it's probably similar to ways that men are bad at sex, right? If you are selfish, if a woman is selfish, if, if a woman is uh, unwilling to give, right? Like few things are more devastating in a relationship for, for, a, uh, for a man than to recognize that a woman just is not open to blowjobs, right? Like if, 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 a, if a woman gives a man, oh, I don't do that, right? If a woman has like an ultimatum rule around, uh, around blowjobs, it's, it's devastating. <laughs> Deborah's saying my face is red. Yes, Deborah, but it's actually cause it's a little warm in my room and the sun is sort of like coming down and it's like providing some heat. It's the first time I've been warm since I moved to Portland. Uh, it's actually the, the first warm day since I moved here back in, back in February. So being, uh, selfish. So selfish would be uh, one of the first one of the first things. Like, don't be selfish. Be willing to give. Be willing to initiate with men. Uh, oh, so that's another that's another that's another big one. Uh, would be too passive. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this. Uh, this is a great uh, a great term. Okay, so too passive. This is a classic way that women can be bad at sex is being super passive and being a pillow princess. Okay. Being a pillow princess, you don't want to be a pillow princess, right? A pillow princess is someone who just lays there and just expects everything to be done by, by him, you know, and he's always the one in charge of, of, of initiating everything and doing everything. And he's giving and giving and giving and giving and not getting anything back. Like that sort of passivity, like over time, it is exhausting to men. Okay. So, uh, don't, don't do that. Uh, it's an important, that's an important, important thing. <laughs> what's another thing? Let's see. What's another way that women can be bad at sex. I'm like going through the, <laughs> going through the arch archives. Uh, I guess this is, I mean, I hate to say it. Uh, how do you spell this? Uh, is this how you spell it? 
unhygienic like dirty like be be clean ladies like we 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 really appreciate it when a woman you know takes care of herself she's clean she smells great all of these things like uh be be conscious of your hygiene <laughs> it's a really really big big thing right because if a woman if if it's if she's funky right if there's if there's a funk going on like all over the place Kim says dead fish. I'm not gonna say dead fish. That was that's a very that's a very crude term. But <laughs> but I mean you know like gotta make sure everything is uh is is clean and everything smells good and and you know upkeep with with hair and everything is super important as well you know because like that's that's a really important uh, it's a really important thing to do. Uh, <laughs> so let's see other ways. Any other ways to uh, address bad sex uh, oh sometimes this is actually can be uh this is one okay so this is a this is a way that sometimes women can be bad sex when they're too aggressive too early okay in one of my most popular videos uh i shared a story uh, of a woman who i did end up you know like having a, a short relationship with like on our first date and this is the way I said it on the video. Uh, she said, uh, she, she, she tried to grab, we were having a wonderful date. We're up on a mountain, like watching the moon and we're like kissing and it's this beautiful experience. And then she just like went straight for, you know, to grab the bread basket, right? And I'm just like, whoa, like we're having this nice romantic date and she just got very sexually aggressive with me like on the first date, like midway through the first date. And I'm just like, you know, like I was looking to build you know, a lot of tension around that and have like this big romantic buildup to uh, sexual initiation. And she actually sort of like killed the polarity of the experience by being too aggressive too early. So recognize that like men enjoy the buildup. We enjoy the chase. We enjoy feeling like you're inviting us forward, but not letting us go all the way forward. You see what I'm saying? So if you're too aggressive too early, or you're always the one sort of pushing and forcing the action sexually, it's going to create issues with uh, with men. <laughs> Lana B says, I remember that. She remembers that video. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic okay so let's see we have lots of great questions here uh let's let's go through i'm gonna shotgun through while we're talking about different ways to turn a uh a man a man on right that's what this that's what the purpose of this show is uh is all about so i'm gonna go ahead and i've got some other great tips that I want to that I want to give you. Okay, so when it comes to kissing, when it comes to kissing, we're talking about kissing, right? Yeah, building tension. Kathy says she loves building tension. Yeah, it's it's huge and you are the one. You are the one that can powerfully build sexual tension in relationship by sending teasing texts, by setting boundaries in a in a powerful way. And you can even do it physically, right? Like even when you're kissing, Okay, so let's talk about how to build tension and build chemistry through kissing. So one of the greatest ways you can kiss a man in a way that really is going to light him up is by using the electric inch, okay? The electric inch is what I call the space between your lips and his lips in between kissing, right? So dancing, like if you treat all of this stuff, if you treat sex, if you treat kissing as a dance and as a form of communication, right? Like partnership means that you move with each other and that you come together and that sometimes there's space. Some of the greatest electricity and tension that there is in relationship and some of the hottest moments are the moments where you're not together, where there's space there. Okay, so use the electric inch and move away from him and tease him and invite him forward. It's a great physical representation of the dynamics that you want to create in relationship. Okay, Chrissy, Chrissy, how do you tell him kissing shouldn't be so wet? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great and 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 honestly this is a just a, a powerful thing is you want to demonstrate the way that you want to be kissed in how you kiss him okay so if you want to be kissed softly kiss him softly like kind of like take take a hold of his head and kiss him softly if you don't want to be kissed so wet 
right? Make sure that your lips are are nice and are nice and dry. And and then if he's if he's being super slobbery, just 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 even let him know, hey, so you know, like I'd it'd be I think it'd be really fun if uh gosh, how would you even say this? This is like a tough <laughs> this is a tough one. But uh I don't don't should him, because should is a it's a judgment thing, right? Should is sort of like a rejective phrase, right? It's a judgmental phrase. So uh, I would just sort of let him know, hey, so why don't why don't we, you know, towel off a little bit? I feel like, you know, you're giving me a shower. Maybe you do it like a little bit of a teasing thing, but in a sort of like a, in sort of a loving way. Mm. Uh, super, 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 uh, super important. See, as far as building tension, uh, Vicky says, my hubby kissed me on the first date. He was dying to, but we waited to go to bed together for weeks. When we finally did, it was electric. Exactly. And that's what you're setting the stage for a relationship if you uh if you give it time to percolate and for that sexual tension to build okay so hugely 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 important so another great kissing tip that i'm going to uh i'm going to make yeah conduct conductor christy i uh i love it i love it so another great way to to turn a man on with kissing is to use your teeth use your teeth teeth you can nibble his lip bite his tongue Bite his neck, his ear lobe. You want to make a man melt right here. Secret weapon for a lot of men. I mean, for some men, it's too much because it's such a sensitive area, right? But like nibbling on a guy's ear, whispering into his ear, breathing into his ear while you're touching him and stuff like that. Forget about it. Men go crazy for that. Okay, so you have a lot of power to uh, to to use your to use your teeth to to do that. Okay, uh, super 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 powerful. And uh, another another great way when you're kissing, and this is this just isn't even just in kissing. This is throughout all uh, throughout all aspects of sex that I don't think women realize how good this is. Use your nails. Use your nails. That is like one of those sensory things. Remember. Men don't have nails. Like we don't have nails. We don't. We don't do this, right? We don't. We don't know how to. Get it. Give me and so give me a one. I, I'd love to hear from y'all. Like, do you anybody who's using these techniques? Give me a one. If you're in the comments, if you're watching this video on the replay, let me know which of these things you're into. Which of these things you use to turn a man, uh, a man on, right? Use your nails on his face, on his back, on his scalp. I mean, few things will hypnotize a man more than having a woman use her nails on the back of his head and his scalp, okay? Super, super, super important. Mm. Uh, Kim has a great question. Okay, so for ear stuff, what do we whisper? What do we whisper? Great question. Uh, anything that makes you feel good, anything about how you're feeling, anything about what you like, anything about what you want, right? Uh, it's it's you you whispering in his ear is gonna turn is gonna make him crazy especially if you're using I love it everybody's into doing nails that's fantastic uh, but yeah the greatest things you can whisper are the things that are turning you on and the, or the things you want him to do to you or how good it feels how good it feels for for him to be touching you like this right now you see what I'm saying so like it just adds a whole nother level of intensity to the situation and intimacy and connection and vulnerability. So uh, it can be a hugely hot experience, okay? So lots of powerful things you can whisper into his ears, but really it doesn't matter. You can't go wrong, right? As long as it's loving and encouraging and sensual and passionate, it's going to make a big difference, okay? Shana Lee says, been married for 16 years, always looking for new ways to keep things exciting. Thanks for doing this. Oh, you're welcome. And so, yeah, like with a relationship that's been been going on for a while, right? How can you create a sexual renaissance? Have you had a conversation around kinks? Have you tried, you know, videoing each other? Have you have you gone through like a little fetish worksheet with each other and, and, and really discovered what each of you is open to. And the worksheet is so cool, right? Because you both fill it out independently and then you come together and you trade and you give it to each other. And that way you don't need to know what all the kinks and fetishes and different things are, but you're gonna know what he's open to and what he's into and then you talk about it. And then you have a conversation and you decide what it is that you wanna try, where the overlap is. So 
the old fetish worksheet is definitely a fun way to sort of learn things that maybe even after 16 years of being married, he might still have some surprises left in the tank. Maybe he's a furry. Maybe he likes dressing up in furry suits and doing that whole thing. That's a thing. That's a, that's a thing that I didn't even know was a thing until r recently. It was <laughs> really fascinating. And I love it. Whatever it is. Look at this. Kathy's great here. Kathy, you're, you're just a, you're a, you're a fireball. I can tell <laughs> she's, she can tell she's feisty. Kathy's feisty. Uh, I love to tell him he's been a bad boy and I'll be addressing this later privately with a nice little pat on the rear. Oh yeah. Give him that little dominatrix. A little dominatrix sass. That's fantastic. I uh, love it. Great question from Natalie Voss here. Is it turning off for a guy if he can feel that I'm really unexperienced? <laughs> actually, actually, Natalie, no, not at all. And here's the thing. A man would actually, a man can actually be turned on by a lack of experience as long as it's combined with a lot of enthusiasm. Okay. Uh, men so much more want to feel enthusiasm about sex and physical connection than experience. Can you can you feel me here? Let me give you a very specific example. I would much rather have a less technically proficient, a less experienced uh, blowjob from a from a woman who's really into it and really. Uh, excited about it and I can tell that she's really like you know enjoying like doing it and wants to make me feel good I will be much more turned on by that than I will by a very experienced low job from a woman who is like eh, just sort of going through the motions or just sort of not fully engaged and present or is doing it from a space of obligation to me because for a lot of women you know blow jobs are like a chore oral sex is like a chore and here's the thing like being inexperienced is does, is does not matter, right? Because another hot thing about you being inexperienced and you're vulnerable and open about it is that he has the opportunity to be a teacher to you. He has the opportunity to teach you what it is that he likes to help help you, you know, learn how to touch him. You know, he'll, he'll be, he can basically mold you, right? Which is very hot to to a lot of men, especially men who may be, you know, more experienced. So don't be self-conscious around your inexperience own it. And as long as you approach uh, sex and physical connection with this guy from a space of openness and enthusiasm and just wanting to learn and wanting to try new things and coming from a space of grounded intention that you want to make him feel good and you want to have really fun sexual experiences with him, he'll actually enjoy the fact that you're inexperienced. You see what I'm saying? So uh, I hope that that served you because that's actually a really good question and a really great a really great point. Yeah, so Nikki says, when I'm kissed on my neck, it drives me crazy. Yeah, exactly. And for a lot of women and for a lot of men, being kissed on the neck is one of the hottest things ever, right? So one of the greatest ways you can think about, you know, what are some things I could do to turn a man on is to ask yourself, what turns me on? <laughs> what do I like? How do I like to be touched? How do I like to be kissed? All of these things can give you great ideas of things to try in the bedroom and then really like look at his and one of the greatest ways you, you can gauge, you know, whether a man is enjoying what you're doing or not, you can't count on him to tell you, you have to watch his reaction, you have to watch his, uh, his behavior, right? And uh, it, it watch the way he responds, if his eyes are rolling back in his head, if he's uh, groaning, if he's paralyzed, while you're giving him oral sex, or while you're touching him right there, if he just gets really quiet and still, then you know you have him totally locked down. Okay, so super, super, super powerful and super, super, super important. Exactly. <laughs> Kathy says, make him eat a lot of fruit. It helps when you taste him. Oh, there you go. So that's a ninja move. That is a ninja move. And it is very true and very accurate. <laughs> Pineapple excellent all that stuff you know like uh it's definitely a definitely a thing okay uh shana has an interesting point here every video says a man wants to hear you say their name in bed thoughts you know like i actually have never really adhered i mean i think some men are into that i think it can be hot i think it can be uh, definitely gratifying for a man to to hear his voice 
called out to a woman. I think it absolutely could be, you know? Uh, I don't think that's a universal thing. I don't think it's something that men are specifically craving, right? I don't think men are craving like, gosh, I wish you would just say my name in bed. You know, like I don't think men are, I don't think men are like into that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think men are like looking for that specifically, but I do think that a man would be like, as if he's hearing his name and you're in the throes of passion saying his name, yeah. I think that a man would absolutely uh, get off on that and be into that. So sure, it's absolutely got a place in the arsenal of ways. It's because it's gonna make him feel confident. It's gonna make him feel like, wow, you know, like I'm this, I'm really making her feel good. She's sort of like, but but Kim says I don't think it's a thing. Yeah, it's not like that. Isn't like a thing that men are craving that you're like if you don't say his name, like that's not something that a man is necessarily craving, you know, but. It's something you can absolutely do, right? <laughs> uh, oh, you're so welcome. Okay. Let's see. What if the guy is the inexperienced one? Would he be turned on to an experienced woman? Yeah, that's why I say like, uh, that's why younger men like older women, right? A lot of times is because they enjoy being with a more experienced woman who can teach them some things, show them a thing or two, is more open, is more direct, super, super hot, make him feel safe. Exactly. Like I have a lot of clients and a lot of students and a lot of friends who are constantly being, I got most of, almost, most of my clients, you know, are being approached and connected by, by men who are, you know, 10, 15 years younger than them on a regular basis. It's like fantastic to see, to see. So yeah, men are definitely into more experienced uh, women. Okay. And so moon goddess, I just got to ask, what's the Slurpee? Put it in the comments. I may put it up. I may not. I am curious about what the Slurpee is. So let's, <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the sun ska. Okay. So Lou asks, what about swallowing? Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, we love it. I mean, there, there's no secret there. Like it's one of the greatest things ever. Like truly like, uh, <laughs> swallowing is something that the men, I mean, you know, men just like an, an uninterrupted continuum of sensation. Okay. So, I mean, what? You don't necessarily have to swallow it, but just allowing a man to climax in your mouth is extremely satisfying and pleasurable for a man. Just point blank. I'm not going to even sugarcoat that one little bit. I'm being real with y'all. But yeah, swallowing is super hot like it is for, for pretty much all men. So just uh, just know that. <laughs> And uh, Dusanska, Dusanka asks, when you talk about oral sex, why is it always about doing it to men? Well, the video is how to turn a man on. So we are, <laughs> we are, uh, we are talking about sort of like I'm trying to give you know women a window into men and what turns them on. And oral sex with men is one of those most powerful tools that you have to turn a man on. And uh, but also for sure. Uh, you know, oral sex to you and to women. Oh, it's a blow. Oh, it's a blow. It's a blow job. Okay. Well, sl Slurpee is just an interesting name for it. I, uh, I love that. But I absolutely think to Sanka that, you know, like, uh, it can be very arousing to a man to, uh, to, to really feel confident in giving oral sex to a woman. And what happens a lot of times is that men will shy away from oral sex with women because they either feel like they don't know what they're doing or they've had some bad experiences in the past, right? So it's gonna be up to you if, you if your partner is resistant to oral sex or it's something to giving you oral sex or anything like that, it's going to be important for you to, uh, to, to have a conversation with him around it and find out where that resistance is coming from and talking to him around it. Because if you can get that to, if you can get him to sort of release that story, then you two can have an incredible connected experience. Because it can be very, especially if that's how you climax, right? It can be super powerful and super hot to a man to, uh, to recognize that he's able to make you come, you know, five, six, seven times, right? Through oral sex or whatever. Like that can be a huge, powerful, uh, huge, powerful thing. So, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, but it's going to be up to you to know what it is that you like, like we talked about earlier, to know how your body works, right. And what you like and how he can show up and give that to you in a powerful way. So again, it's all going to come back to, uh, communication, <laughs> right? So yeah. So I love it. I love it. So ladies, 
Uh, welcome to everybody who's joining us live. Lots of new people. If you have not subscribed yet to my channel, take a second, hit that little subscribe button. I'm always uploading new content. You don't want to miss it. And if you haven't signed up for Mastery Connection yet, there it is. Boom, right there. Masteryconnection.com. My uh, my live uh, four week free love course. I'm, I'm doing this for free for my community one last time as a beta, as a beta test. It's going to be selling for between $997 to $2,000 uh, starting in June. This is the last beta run. So if you want to be a part of this incredible community, we have over a thousand women on our Facebook group and you're going to get live coaching from me twice a week in the Facebook group. It is an incredible experience. Okay. So you can sign up at masteryconnection.com. We start next Monday, bright and early with module one. So be sure to join the party. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I mean, lots of, lots of great ninja sex conversation going on in the live chat. If you're watching this on the replay, be sure to check out the live chat of this. Uh, we're just having a full blown sex conversation. It is fantastic. Uh, Nikki's talking about syrup. We're adding syrup, make it like a foodie experience, turn them into a chicken and waffle sandwich. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Would it be okay to tell your partner that you want to come first before you give him Slurpees? Yeah, I think absolutely, RC, uh, RC. I think that especially because right when you give a man uh, a blowjob, right, it ought to, or you, or you, you know, you're giving him oral sex. It just generally flows right into y'all having sex, right? So it's one of those things where like if you want to, and then after sex has happened, then to sort of like re-motivate him to give you oral sex, that's like a whole other job. Right. So I think it's very fair for you to be like, I, I, I look forward to uh, this. I look forward to, you know, to I really want to go down on you. Why don't you uh, why don't you go? Why don't you go first? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and do that. I think it's super, super, super powerful. Uh, so, yeah, I think, again, and this is an opportunity for you to practice pacing and boundaries with a man. Okay, it's a powerful opportunity for you to practice pacing and boundaries. Uh, Emma says, well, YouTube hasn't shut it down. Uh, no, I mean, we're not, listen, we're not doing anything obscene here. I, I'm a firm, a firm advocate in uh, being able to have open conversations and open dialogues. And in, in Mastery Connection, in the course, uh, you can sign up for right there at that link, masteryconnection.com. We're going to have open dialogues around whatever is coming up in relationship for you, whatever is coming up sexually for you, and I will work with you and coach you through it one step at a time. So check it out. I'm Rob running this course for free one last time. After that, you will be. Uh, it will be a paid course moving forward. So would love to have you. Uh, would love to have you. You know, join the course. Kinga has a great question. What to do with low libido? Okay, so I think one of the best things to do is to get to the root of it, to really get to the root of like where where is this low libido coming from, right? Is he an older person who maybe his testosterone is starting to lower a little bit? Maybe sex has become super routine and he may have checked out a little bit. Like, is it a physical thing or is it an emotional thing or is it a mental thing? right? Like low libido can come from a lot of different ways. And so it's important for you to really have a vulnerable dialogue with your partner and ask him, you know, like, so I notice that we haven't, we're not having sex as much as we used to. And I'd love to understand and just, and figure out, you know, like how I, I love having sex with you and I'd love to have more sex. So like, what can we do? You know, how can, how can I shift? Like, what do you want to try? Do you want to try something new? Just start having some, just asking him some questions. Oh my gosh, Natalie's comment. Uh, listening to this is hotter than watching some adult videos. Hello, Natalie. I don't even want to know what you're doing over there. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, uh, I love it. I'm so glad that you're enjoying <laughs> the show. This is super, super fun. Uh, Moon Goddess is calling me a bad boy. Am I? I guess I am. I'm the only guy doing, I'm the only dating coach doing uh, explicit sex lives on YouTube. But hey, you know what? I'm willing to talk about anything if it is going to support you. Okay, that is what I am all about. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Oh, Lou. Lou just signed up. Yeah, so y'all, if y'all sign up, I'm going to get, let's give Lou. <laughs> Lou signed up for Mastery of Connection. For anybody who signs up, if you sign up, let me know in the comments and I'm going to give you the 
air horn. <laughs> so let me know in the comments if you've already signed up or if you're going to sign up, especially if you sign up on this live. I would love to give you a shout out here on the live. So uh, super excited. Uh, Lana B is going to sign up after this. Yeah. Good job, Lana B. All right. I'll look forward to having you in the course. We're going to have so much fun. All right. So uh kim carrick says what builds up to sex for a man especially if he is not socially media wise i don't exactly understand that question <laughs> kim what builds up to sex uh please let me let me know uh, i'd love to i'd love to hear a little bit more around that uh Luis asks what if a man doesn't like going down on women okay and again like this this goes back to a question that we had earlier around what if he wants something that you don't like or you want something that he doesn't like, right? So you two are in two separate positions on this. And it's important that within reason, if you're in relationship with this person, that you find some middle ground, that you find a compromise space, right? So for, so for this situation, if he doesn't like going down on women, it's important to understand why. Is it because he's got, had some bad experiences? Is it because he's got some issues around? Is it because he feels inexperienced? He doesn't know how to do it. Is it because he's got an issue with like a, a smell thing or a taste thing or like, but have an open dialogue with him around it and, and make him feel safe to share with you around this topic, okay? Because it's gonna be important for you to talk to him about it. And, if, and, 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 and you're gonna get to invite him. You're gonna get to stand in your power and really let him know, hey, so it's super important to me that I have this as a dimension of our sex life. It's super important to me that, you know, I mean, I'm gonna go down on you, I'm willing to do this for you, and that I also wanna receive this as well, right? And he gets to really feel and understand that, you know, like it's important to you and that you're not willing to be in a relationship without it, okay? Because Arlet says, I would dump him. <laughs> Arlet's like, I'm not putting up with that. And yeah, sometimes that's what it takes, right? Is a man knowing that there's a very firm consequence attached to, you know, you not giving him what it is that, uh, that you want. Okay. Super, super, super important. Tanya Johnson. Oh, Tanya signed up two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> so good. Arlette. Yes. Arlette gets some applause. <laughs> up on last slide. Uh, fantastic. Darlene is going to sign up for Master Your Connection after the <laughs> Oh, cool. I love it. Uh, hippie girl. <laughs> hippie girl says, do men prefer their women to be shaved? Honestly, like, I think that's a common perception that women have that is not necessarily accurate. I don't think men need women to be like the little girls. Like that isn't necessarily what men are looking for or what they want. I think that as long as things are maintained in a, in a healthy way, right? As long as things are trimmed or they're just just there's a degree of care taken with the nether regions that that's really all it boils down to so and, and but again and some men have different preferences right all men have different preferences but in general n men are not necessarily needing the bikini wax you know i mean it's, men would prefer a woman to, to, uh, to feel like you know it's a woman right that they're that they're uh that they're canoodle canoodling with <laughs> Oh, Stell signed up. Yeah. Last week. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, and it's very subjective. Yeah, like Christy says, it's a very subjective thing. Some men are into it. Some men aren't. Some women, it makes sense for them. Other women, it doesn't. So just know that it's very, uh, it's very open, a very open thing. <laughs> Misha's giving the sad eyes. Misha, why the sad eyes? <laughs> oh, hold on, Misha, here's her question. Oh, that's what she was giving me the sad eyes about the question. What should I do to not make my partner climax so fast to make us to make it long lasting for us both? Great question, Misha. Okay, so is he it's important to look at like where he's uh like where is he coming? Like how early, right? And at what stage of the situation? Okay. Uh what stage of the conversation, what stage of the situation is he is he climaxing? right and how can you ease in ease him into the process right how much how much more can you integrate in foreplay like is he trying to just jump right into sex 
Is it early into, uh, Kim says, don't blow the horn. I'm not going to blow the horn. <laughs> I will not blow the horn on, uh, on this. That would be hilarious. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think a lot of this comes down to responsibly pacing the dynamic. Like you're the conductor, right, of the dynamic of the sex and of the sexual experience with him. So leading him into foreplay. Leading him into foreplay is super, super, super important, right? And 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 keeping things slow. Uh, yeah, if you've never done tantra, tantra sex can be very powerful, right? As uh, as M says here, and just you know, just in terms of of regular, of just you know, having having normal sex, you know, it's uh it's important for you to go slow, go slow with him, especially if he's a little, uh, especially if he's a little quick on the trigger. Uh, you want to be you want to be slow and you want to take him one step at a time and and let him know you know that how much you enjoy taking your time and how important it is for for it to last right because he might just think that you know uh oh please lower the volume on the horn okay so i'm getting feedback that the horn may be a little loud okay i think i can actually turn it down yeah i think i can turn it down oh yeah oh yeah here we go let's try it now <laughs> Look at that. That's a lot. That's a lot quieter, right? I turned it down 75%. So, <laughs> oh, we got 8 bit pokey. <laughs> <Get around the floor. laughs> I love it. I'll turn this one down too. I don't want to, I don't want to hurt anybody's ears. I, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> All right. Way to go, 8 bit pokey. So, masteryofconnection.com is how you sign up for this course, right? Uh, that is how we do it. Okay, so go ahead and over to masteryconnection.com and you can sign up right there, right there in the uh, on that on this this little thing right here. Whoop, there I am, masteryconnection.com. Uh, <laughs> so I guess I was traumatizing everybody with the horn. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love the horn. <laughs> now it's much quieter. Okay, yes, the volume is now the volume's at an acceptable level. Fantastic. Okay, great. Oh, look at Mary Ann. We got a testimonial. Boom. Uh, Mary Ann says, I took your advice, Matt, and texted him. I want to make this weekend special. What would you like to spice things up? He died and went to heaven. Well, that's definitely an applause right there. I love it. I love it. That's so good, Mary Ann. And yeah, he does. And men will. I mean, just the simple act of you asking a question, you demonstrating curiosity and investment in their pleasure, men are going to be over the moon about that. It's truly, truly, truly uh, powerful. Uh, Shana says, I didn't get to sign up. I went to your website and put in the name and email. No, not no, you don't want to sign up there. You want to sign up at uh, masteryofconnection.com. That is the, uh, that's the, that's the website. My, that other, that, that on my website is, uh, is a totally different link. It goes to a totally different thing. You want to go to masteryconnection.com there on the, uh, on the thing and fill out a brief application there. And that's how you're going to get to sign up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, take a second and subscribe to my channel. I'm always uploading new content and I'm doing more live videos. Aren't these fun, right? I'm hanging out with y'all solo for like, you know, an hour, two hours. What other coach? What other coach is doing that? <laughs> uh, so, oh, Alex says I'm looking cute. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, all right. So, important question from Kim Carrick. Do you get irritated with Matt versus Matt? I only get irritated if somebody that I'm dating or somebody close to me misspells my name and puts two T's in it. Okay, like if you know me, if we're in a relationship, either a friendship or a romantic relationship, I can get a little, I, I will get a little annoyed if you put two T's in my name, right? One time, my dad put two T's on my name in a birthday card, like five years ago. That was a little astonishing. I'm like, bro, you name me this. Like, how are you not spelling, how are you not spelling your own son's name right? Like, this is the name that you gave the person, like... <laughs> when I was born and he misspelled it on a card. That was hilarious. But in general, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what Miranda says, yes, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is a lot of fun. We got 160 people watching. This is a party. Okay. So Arlette says, 
a great question. Do guys like cock worshiping? I'm actually not well versed on the cock worshiping Arlet. I can't, I mean, cock worshiping sounds like, I mean, sounds fun to me. I mean, I'd be open to it. Like I've, I've never, I don't know that I've experienced like, it sounds like it's like a ritualistic sort of, I think I've read, I think I watched a video on some lady's channel, uh, about, about, about that, but it's the act of being really nurturing and really honoring a man's, a man's cock. It sounds, it sounds like it would be fantastic, right? Like, cause again, it all comes down to, is this making the man feel safe? Is this making the man, you know, like feel like he's like, like, is he feeling safe sexually? Cause a lot of times men have shame or insecurity around their dicks for like whatever reason, right? Either because they've got performance issues or is it long enough or is it whatever, you know, like there's always men have the, the, the cock is a major source of insecurity, right? For, for a lot of men. And so I would imagine the cock worshiping, whether it be some like ritualistic acknowledgement and loving up of uh, of our of our of our guy, our little guy, would be very appreciated. <laughs> so yeah, I would I would say so. You might have to, you know, if he's not used to that, you might have to ease him into it and just let him know like that you want to take care of him and to really relax and allow him to receive. That's one of the things that may be tricky about that is that uh, men can sometimes have a hard time surrendering and a hard time receiving. In, in, in situations like that. So it's gonna be important for you to really set the stage and set the expectation that you want him to uh, really relax and just allow, allow him to receive you know, love uh, from you. But I could see it being, once you, once you build up the habit and the practice with him, I could see it becoming like a really powerful part of, uh, of your relationship, right? So uh, super, super, super powerful. And all right, so last few questions before I shut it down, because it is about dinner time for me. Uh, let's see, <laughs> what are acceptable compliments for his manhood? Oh my gosh, Miranda. Whatever he likes it to be called. If he likes it to be called Maximus, call him Maximus. If he likes it to be called like a dirty little tool or whatever, if he's into that sort of stuff, like call it that. The important, the acceptable compliment is the compliment that he likes, that he that he enjoys, that he appreciates, right? So I would try some different ones, right? And see what turns him on, see what he likes, see what makes him smile. That'll, uh, that'll, you know, you can never go wrong if you're looking to compliment his uh, manhood. You can never go wrong with telling him how good it feels to you, how good it feels, truly. Like just start there. Like this feels so good. Like you feel like us also any compliment that re, that sort of like indirectly uh, refers to size. Like, oh my God, you it, you fill me up so well. Like stuff like that, you know, where he gets the sense that like his, because a man doesn't need to have a huge penis. A man just wants to know that his penis is big enough for you. That's a very important point that just flowed right out of me, right? A man doesn't need to feel that he's, you know, Ron Jeremy or whatever, but a man just wants to know that whatever size his uh, cock is, that it's it's big enough for you, right? That it makes you happy. So the greatest compliment you can give a man's penis is how it makes you feel, right? That it makes you feel good. So I hope that that helped. I think that that was the perfect answer. Do not call it baby carrot ever under any circumstances, right? Uh, telling him that it makes your legs shake Good compliment, okay? Lori is great, that's a great nickname. She calls him Big Sauce. Love it, Big Sauce. Why the hell not? That is fantastic. <laughs> uh, hi Matt, do you think a man has a lot of control not to come faster? Some do, some don't. That's very subjective. Some men have an amazing amount of control over that, some men, if they, you know, bump into somebody in line at Costco, they, you know, lose their, they lose their stack, right? Like they blow their load, right? So it's like some men have very little control. Some men have a ton of control. Oh, what do we got? We got Nikki Fandrakis has signed up. Awesome. She signed up at masteryconnection.com. If you haven't signed up yet, take a second right here www.masteryconnection.com. We are starting our transformational relationship course 
next Monday. We got over a thousand women in the Facebook group already. We'd love to have you as part of our tribe. We're going to be, uh, it's a free beta course. It's a free beta run, the final free beta of my $2,000 Mastery of Connection course. You know you want to be a part of it. It is going to be amazing. So check it out right there at masteryconnection.com or at the link in the comments. You don't want to miss it. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love these. I love these. Oh my gosh. OMG. Matt is going on a date. The lady, ladies, Matt is going to date with are probably relationship Mozarts. I mean, no, nobody's a relationship Mozart. We're all just learning this stuff in real time. I'm dating, you know, I, I, I date great women who are, you know, willing to be, go on dates, be in relationship with me, hang out. I mean, I'm, you know, ooh. I'm always just looking for great women that I have a great connection with. Those are the sort of women that I go on uh, go on dates with. <laughs> All right. So uh, Jada asks, if they're in love, does that make them let go faster? Okay, does, if they're in love, does it make them come faster? It can. It can. That could be a pressure. That could be a, a source of pressure. You got to remember with sex. In sex, men are... Uh, men are dealing with pressure. They're dealing with the pressure to perform. They're dealing with the pressure to make you feel good. They're dealing with the pressure of the whole situation, right? Uh, that's a that's a very important. It's a very important part. So uh, if they're in love, it can, it could, it could, it could be something that could make them come too fast. It could make them feel a ton of pressure because they're so emotionally invested in your pleasure, and it could make them perform less less effectively it could make them not be able to like keep it up i mean i don't know it could pressure a lot of men respond in a lot of different ways to pressure you know what i'm saying so it's just something to something to look at jada asks is the wetter the better is there too wet i mean i don't think so you know like i think most men they appreciate that because again if a man's primary vested interest is making you feel good right and one of the greatest ways that he can understand that is by how wet you're getting from whatever it is that he's doing, right? It's going to make him feel good that you are feeling good. It's going to turn him on that you are turned on. The fact that you are super wet is going to get, uh, is going to really get his motor running. Okay. So, uh, that's, I, I would say that there's no such thing as too wet, unless he's got like a weird hang up around his sheets or something, or I don't know. And that's something he just gets to, he just gets to work on himself, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. Arlet, great point here. You ask great questions, Arlet. Uh, it'd be funny if your guy watched, if your guy randomly watched this video or the last one, you had a lot of great comments on the last video. It would, all your relationship stuff would, would be out in the open. <laughs> he always refers to sex as fucking. He never uses the term making love. Uh, we've only been together for six months. Maybe it's too early. Okay, Arlet. Well, question: Have you said? Have you have you been dropping l bombs? Have you told each other that you loved each other in other like outside of the bedroom? Is the love word part of the dialogue with the two of you yet? Okay, that's an important question because if love hasn't been a dialogue that you've used with him, if you guys haven't been dropping l bombs in your rest of your relationship, do not expect him to be talking about making love. Uh, that's a very, making love is a very, remember, we talk about the relationship between sex and pressure for men. Making love is a very big uh, term for men, right? Like we are making love. That is a very, I mean, there's a lot, that's a very emotionally loaded term, right? So if he has issues, but fucking is also a very direct, pretty coarse term, right? So maybe having sex, maybe like playing around. Is there some midpoint between uh between fucking and making love because for i'm just saying she says no it's not but i'm saying well to you there's not right but to a man like making love might be an might be an emotionally intimidating term uh term so i would just i would just you know like ask like, if you, are you guys saying i love you yet outside of the bedroom just an important uh an important question <laughs> and oh dusanka has joined us yes Way to go, Dusanka. Dusanka signed up for Mastery of Connection. She's joining the tribe. Welcome. I love it. And for anybody else who was thinking about signing up, y'all, masteryconnection.com. Head on over. Check it out. Sign up. You can leave this plan 
uh, in the background. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, oh, she's saying uh, we don't use the elbow. Okay, so there, so there you go. That explains it. If y'all aren't haven't said I love you to each other yet, he will never say the word love when it comes to sex. Okay, don't uh don't uh even expect that in any way shape or form until you two have started saying i love you in your in your relationship are you with me so that's just 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 assume that right <laughs> he's not going to talk about making love until you two are just normally saying i love you to each other on the regular on a regular basis okay uh Oh boy. Oh, this is cute. I like this. Uh, keep it light. Laura, you're fun. I know Laura's in Mastery Connection. I saw, remember, saw her introductory. I can't wait to have you uh, on Office Hours, Laurie. We're going to have a good time. Uh, Laurie says, keep it light. I asked mine if he ever went to prison. I'd be, if he'd be, if I went to prison, if he'd be my conjugal visitor. It makes him be, made him feel special. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Yeah, a little future pacing. Super, super, super fun. Uh, I love that. That's really fun. Yeah, keep it light. Be playful. Be fun. Men have a very high play drive. Men love to play. We do. We love to play in bed. We love to play in conversation. We love to play in any way. So where can you make relationship playful? Super, super, super powerful. Uh, Laura has a good question here. Thoughts on pillow talk immediately after sex. Oh my gosh. Uh, give him a minute. <laughs> is the first the first my first response give him a minute right because if you launch immediately into deep intimate emotional conversation right at the end of uh at, right as he's just came right he's just had an orgasm he's in this beautiful peaceful relaxed space maybe for the first time in in his whole day or his whole week right he's out of his head he's in his body he's completely relaxed and he feels empty in a beautiful peaceful way if during that space like all of a sudden it's like so and and he's in he, and in, in that space gets interrupted like right when it happens with like you know some like deep emotional stuff uh, it can be a little jarring to him. I am saying that, you know, after a little bit, after, you know, a little time and you guys are breathing is calmed down, just, just, oh, after he dashes to the bathroom, of course. <laughs> okay, so yeah, once things are settled down and once you two have, you know, sort of like come back to earth from the beautiful experience that you've shared, I think it's a great time to pillow. I think, I think post-sex hanging out in bed is one of the most powerful opportunities we have to have intimate, connected conversations in relationship. So uh, to talk about, and also just to talk about while you're still fresh from that experience, what you liked, what you didn't like, you know, uh, what, whatever it is, like talk about what happened. You can learn a lot about each other's preferences and what you like and what you don't like in that window after sex. Super, super, super powerful. Uh, Katrina's asking, why do they run to the bathroom right after sex? Yeah, to clean up is one reason. Exactly, Lori. Also, if they maybe they have to pee, like they were, sometimes that happens where you're having sex and you realize, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta pee, but you can't because you're in the middle of doing your thing, right? And then right afterwards, you gotta go take care of business, right? That's, that's a whole thing. Oh, we got another mastery connection. Boom. <laughs> Woo! All right. Natsatsia Ali Vu is in. Welcome to Mastery Connection, my dear. Uh, to anybody else who's still interested in signing up, we're going to be uh, closing doors here soon. We're in our final three, four days before the course starts. So be sure to sign up at masteryofconnection.com. Uh, our course starts. We've got over a thousand women in our Facebook group, and it is going to be an epic experience a four week love and relationship course with over a thousand women. I'm live in the group. Uh, for office hours twice a week, it's going to be an incredible experience about learning how to master connection from the inside out in your life. So, uh, <laughs> Kathy says, thank you for the man sides view. Very eye opening. Oh, so glad. I'm so glad I could, uh, I could help you on this. I, I really enjoy, uh, doing lives like this. I'm like, I'm just going to do a sex live. Let's just do a sex live. Just like all the way. Cause I mean, I'll talk, I'll tell you anything, right? Uh, this is, this is what I, this is what I love to talk about. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, take a second, hit that little subscribe button. I'm always uploading new content. You know you wanna be a part of the tribe. We would love to have you. Okay, 
Uh, Shana says, how do you get to the Facebook group once you've joined? I joined the correct way this time. You'll get a confirmation email, Shana. Shana signed up for Mastery Connection. Uh, and so you'll get a confirmation email once my team reviews your application. And then uh, you'll get an email. It'll have all the instructions on how to sign up. So just know that that is going to be coming to you soon. Okay. Uh, what was there? Okay. So Casey asks, what defines a good blowjob? <clears throat> Great question, Casey. Okay. So one of the things about, uh, about blowjobs that's important for you to realize from a man's perspective is you know, a variety of sensations and continuity of sensation is super powerful. So if you're, uh, if you're, oh God, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to demonstrate it. I'm not going to physically demonstrate it, but you want to maintain physical contact of some part of you. Like, like the more sort of different varieties of, of sensation you can give a man during a blowjob, the better. So one of my most popular videos is, uh, I think six ways to make him melt with your mouth. Right. And in that video, I talk about the power of the double twist blow job where you actually twist your hands in, in, in opposite directions while going back and forth on uh, with your mouth on, on the end. Right. On his on his penis. That is super hot because think about all the he's getting three different types of sensation at the same time in that. And he's getting his entire penis basically is enveloped. Right in, in, in you. Uh, and, and also playing with his, playing with his balls, mixing it up that way. You know, you don't need to, you don't need to be able to deep throat. You don't need to be able to give a blow job like a porn star. Although, you know, a lot of porn is kind of toxic, right? When it comes to sex, cause it's glamorizing sex or whatever. But if you want to learn how to give a really, uh, a really epic blow job, there's a lot of a lot of adult videos have rock star blowjobs <laughs> as part of the as part of the full thing, and so uh, yeah, you can learn you can actually learn if you want to actually see a double twist blowjob done in perfect execution. <laughs> watch some watch some adult videos, and you will find some uh, you'll find some amazing things. But yeah, integrate your hands and your mouth. Exactly. See. Kisses. He loves that twist. The twist, ladies. And here's the thing. If your man ain't that big, you know, just two fingers, two finger twists. You don't have to do whole hand. Whole Two whole hands a lot. That's that's a long, you know, that's a serious piece of equipment you're dealing with. But if he's not that, not as big, right? A couple fingers on each side. Just as good. Just as good. So, but find a way to incorporate different, uh, different sensations, different rhythms, you know, licking up the sides of it, like using, and, and so this is interesting. Uh, Nikki says, no teeth. I actually disagree, Nikki. Light teeth can be super hot. Light teeth done very, very specifically can be very, 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 very hot. So, but they must be done with care, right? Because it can easily be super brutal. But Laura Shoft, double twist. Double twist is the greatest. You give a man a double twist blowjob, he will be utterly paralyzed. He will be putty in your hands in every sense of the word. <laughs> it is huge. Uh, and Shane is saying, and the secret spot. Okay. And the spot she's referring to is, gosh, I'm just going to be super graphic here, is right at the base of a man's, you know, balls. He's got this like spot, like the perineum spot. Uh, if you, if you sort of like put pressure on that while you're giving a man a blow job right behind his balls, super hot, super hot, feels really good. Uh, just, just letting you know, you know, don't, don't hesitate. Give it a shot. He will like it a lot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so they do they, and if they do, so does that mean he doesn't like having intercourse? Uh, if they'd rather have blowjobs, some guys, some guys, you know, some guys are like that. Right. But it's, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, obviously he doesn't get to just have blowjobs, right? You guys get to have, uh, you guys get to have you know, all types of sex. Okay. <laughs> People are asking, what did I, what did I study? Natalie Vass is asking, what did I, what did I study? I'm guessing psychology and Lana B who has been watching my stuff for a while, got it right. Uh, I was a lawyer. I was an attorney and then I owned a restaurant before I uh, fell in love with personal development and got into coaching. So that was my journey, but I have done a tremendous amount of, uh, a tremendous amount. I've studied a tremendous amount of psychology and done a lot of uh, a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of work on myself, and I've spent thousands of hours uh, coaching women 
uh, in various containers, both in my own business and through a leadership academy in San Diego. So I absolutely love it. Shane is like, yep, I got the spot. Uh, that's the spot. Yep. Lori's, Lori's, Lori knows what's up. The man vein and the spot. That's what it is. And Vicky has a great point. Yeah, be gentle. It ain't a screwdriver. Yeah. Oh, that's a really, really good point about blowjobs. Don't be too rough. Don't be too rough with it. But but be willing to be a little rough, but not too rough. There's a there's a fine line there, and it's and it's going to be different from every man depending upon how sensitive his his uh, his 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 cock is. So there's the, the the threshold is going to be different for every man. But when you're giving the double twist or the single twist, or however you're giving him a blowjob, like find that maximal point of of pressure that he's getting a really intense experience, but it's not too much. Right. And, uh, and you can ask him, do you like that? You know, would you want it a little harder? Like ask him, he'll tell you, he'll tell you point blank, right? You can go a little harder. He'll let you know. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, soft Louis says, what have I walked into? <laughs> you have walked into a sex based Facebook or Facebook, a sex based YouTube live about seven secrets to turn a man on. I think we've actually given about 37 Secrets to turn a man on, and we've been going for an hour and 49 minutes, and I'm going to be going real soon. So if you want to sign up, if you want to, uh, Alex is asking how to sign up for Mastery Connection. You sign up through this link right here, Alex. I'm going to put, put it over my eyes so that, you know, it's impossible to miss. MasteryConnection.com. You can sign up here. Uh, do it Do it now while we're on the live, and I'll, I'll shout you out. I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little applause. <laughs> Or, uh, or, or, or an air horn. I mean, now I got the volume down on the air horn. <laughs> but yeah, I'd love to shout you out and celebrate uh, you. Oh, uh, Natalie, I guess you missed. I described the spot. The spot is right behind a man's balls. It's the, the perineum or the taint area. You put a little pressure there while you're giving him a blowjob. It makes uh, that more pleasurable. It also makes his climax more pleasurable as well well you just want to make sure you do it very very gently and gradually increase the pressure until you sort of reach his threshold every man's going to have different threshold around that but it is a very powerful spot <laughs> i uh i i will let you know okay uh let's see yeah and and lou asks how hard to do it again it's gonna be very specific to the man very specific to the man every man has a different sort of preference some men are super sensitive and can only handle really light blowjobs some men want it a little harder. It's going to be very variable, okay? Uh, <laughs> Lisa says, if there was a class like this for men, how many men would show up? Not as many uh, as there are women here tonight. Well, that's just because there's just women are just much more open to like learning and working on themselves, right? And on their relationships than, than men, unfortunately, right? I mean, but that's just the way that it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and... Good old kisses and 92 girl, you know, girl knows what's up. Uh, yeah, be gentle with the BJ and you can tell the reaction getting harder and bigger just the way you manage it. Show your rear view. It is a turn. Yes, it's a turn. It's a turn on. Uh, Karen says, I can't get on the link. Head to www.masteryofconnection.com. Karen, uh, you most that link most definitely works. Uh, there's also a link in the comments of this video. In the first comment, you should be able to click that link and go to that website and check that out. Kim, oh, I love you too, my dear. This has been a lot of fun. I've had a great time. Uh, I am going to, uh, oh, this is a great question. Gosh, are we just, we're just going right down the rabbit hole with this blowjob thing. It's fine. I'm more than happy to do it. Is it okay to stop when he starts coming? No, you want to keep going because that's when it feels the best for him while he's having an orgasm is when it's most important for you to keep doing it. Keep doing something, okay? <laughs> keep doing something. If you if you're if you're having if you have an aversion for whatever reason to uh, him coming in your mouth, which I would invite you to get over because it's one of the most beautiful sensations that a man can experience. Uh, like that's one at least use your hand. You know, but there's nothing more anticlimactic than for right as you're about to come or you're in the middle of coming for a woman to just pull back and to just leave you sort of like flopping in the wind, you know, coming. It, it kills it kills the orgasm. It kills the climax for for the man, like in a in a really brutal way. Right. So keep doing something. 
at the very least, keep using your hand. I would invite you to keep using your mouth because it will it'll elevate his orgasm to into the stratosphere into a completely different uh, way. So just know that. Yeah, yeah, a, a, exactly. So so that was a, that was a great question. Love always. And uh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, Shaz, last few questions here before we uh, sign off. Shaz says, my man can be shy. How do I keep him interested in me? Well, Shaz, I mean, a lot of how to uh, keep a man interested is to uh, keep keep finding new ways to turn him on. Keep asking him questions. If he is naturally shy, it's going to be up to you to uh, keep 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 engaging with him and moving and, and moving him into being comfortable sharing because a lot of times men are shy when they don't feel safe. You see what I'm saying? So especially when it comes to sex, especially when it comes to vulnerability, like make him feel safe. Demonstrate that you're really curious in what he in, in what he likes. You're really curious about what he's into and that you're willing to talk to him and explore whatever it is he's into. You know what I'm saying? But that's one of the greatest ways to keep a man uh, interested in you, okay? Uh, oh, Shana says, thanks for this. New here, but I've never been able to interact on a live like this before. It's much appreciated. Yeah, this is super fun. And I, I love doing live stuff. I, I've i been doing them on my Facebook page for many years. And I'm going to start doing, uh, I think I'm going to do a live a week here in uh, on the YouTube channel. So you should be able to check that out. They're not always going to be this long. <laughs> They'll usually be probably half an hour to an hour. But this is a special period because we are uh, getting ready to launch Mastery Connection and we would love to have you as part of the tribe over there. If you haven't signed up yet, head on over to MasteryConnection.com. I'd love to shout you out before we go off uh, video over here, okay? But thank you so much, ladies, for joining me on this amazing uh, dialogue that we've been having. This has been so much fun. Uh, for those of you watching on the replay, congratulations. If you've watched for almost two hours, that is amazing. Be sure to hit that little subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'm always uploading great new content, at least one video a week, and you know you wanna get notified when I'm posting new stuff. And if you haven't yet signed up for Mastery Connection, this is your opportunity to do so, masteryconnection.com. Uh, it's an incredible four-week live video course that you are going to absolutely love. I'm doing it for free as a beta test for uh, my tribe. This is my final free beta. It's a $2,000 course, and I would love to have you as part of that course. We start next Monday, so be sure to sign up now. You can get into our Facebook group. We have over uh, 1,000 women in there already, and we'd love to have you as part of that tribe. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> kiss. Matt, I love this live chat. Thank you so much. Can we do another live chat? Yeah, I'm I mean, I'm planning on doing lives on a, on a regular basis, so uh, lots of great lots of great shares. They keep coming in. Eye gazing, super powerful. Great way to turn a guy on. G giving a man eye contact while you're giving him a blowjob, forget about it. Super hot. Looking up at him while you're doing it, lights out lights out great great ad as we close our blowjob ninja tactics one of the best things uh one of the best things you can do is to make lots of sustained eye contact with a man while you're uh while you're doing it okay so uh, oh, thanks to everybody who's been watching michelle christy Lori v metal berry <laughs> lou uh, oh, Tony's so excited for the course. Oh, we're excited to have you, Tony. It's going to be so much fun. Introduce yourself in the Facebook group if you haven't already. Uh, I'm excited to I'm excited to see you over there, and hopefully I'll see y'all over in the Master Your Connection Facebook group. I'm gonna go check in there right now. So if you haven't signed up yet, sign up and then come over and say hi to me over there. All right, you don't you don't have to say goodbye to me now. So lots of love to each and every one of you, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.